Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ms. Tristisa Ibrekulundi. Um, I just want to acknowledge we're restarting this class because we have a little bit of a technical issue, but we're, uh, we're going to start it from the beginning. So this class is about teaching online classes. Um, and uh, I've been asked to teach this class a couple of times, uh, a few times actually. And so uh, I figured it was about time to do it. So here we are. Um, I just want to thank all the people who are watching this class right now who have been so incredibly patient. My computer died in the middle of the class, so we're starting over. So my name is uh, Mr. Stisa Ibrikilundi. Uh, I've been in the SCA and in Ontier for over 20 years. Most of that time has been spent in the barony of Glamere. I did spend a couple of years um, in Dragon's Mist as well. Uh, my main focus is posament and um, kind of wire in general and uh, Berga Sweden in the 10th century. Um, I also dabble in antler work too, actually. Um, modernly, I've worked professionally organizing online classes, meetings, and trainings as an administrative assistant. Um, and I used Zoom actually primarily to do that, um, kind of statewide trainings, that kind of thing. Uh, I've been hosting an online class series for artisans to share their knowledge during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the series currently features 15 recorded classes with six additional scheduled and, um, and, a, and more in the future. My, my hope is to keep this series going um, as long as we can't be together um, or until I run out of people who want to teach for me or ideas of classes that I want to teach. So about this class, we're going to focus primarily on the Zoom platform because uh, mostly because that's, that's what I have most experience in um, and it's what I'm most comfortable showing you. Um, we're going to talk about why you would want to teach online classes, what you can, uh, what can you, you can teach online, what works online, how to plan for your classes, um, setting up your Zoom classes, the kind of technical aspect of that. Um, uh, the best ways to keep uh, your classes secure, uh, advertising your classes, making sure that the word gets out there that you're, you're teaching and you're doing something, um, and communicating with students. And what I mean by that is communicating with students outside of, the, outside of when you're teaching. So why would you want to teach an online class? Um, right now, uh, we, the current social distancing restrictions due to COVID-19 are, um, are a big part of it. You know, we are, we're in a situation where we can't see each other and, you know, we want to continue, you know, in our community. And, um, and teaching classes uh, is, is something that I love doing and, you know, learning and teaching is something that a lot of us love to do. And, um, and so, you know, being able to do that online is a really great opportunity. The other thing that I really, um, you know, you can also use Zoom for social gatherings, you know, get togethers with friends or, you know, business meetings, um, any kind of, you know, get together you want to do. We've, I've seen all sorts of really incredible things that people are doing. It's really cool. Interviewing people, all sorts of really cool stuff. Um, sharing your knowledge with a larger audience. So normally when we teach, we are teaching at an event, we're teaching, you know, in our home, we're teaching a small class. The great thing about online classes is that you can open it up to people from all over the world. Um, and, you know, and so that's a, that's a really great opportunity to, to be able to access more information from people and to be able to share your information with more people because, you know, we all do, you know, we're all working really hard to learn you know, to learn the things that we do. And it's a really cool thing to be able to share that with as many people as we can. Um, more accessibility to information for everyone, regardless of ability to travel to events. So there are a lot of people that have, um, you know, financial issues or they have health issues or transportation issues. And this creates, you know, a, a little more, uh, you know, equitable community. Right. It, it makes a, a situation where we, you know, we're we're not just saying you can, you know, you have to be at this place in order for for you to learn this thing or for you to be part of our community. Um, you know, you can you can be a part of our community and, and be online. Right. And I think that's a really, really great thing. 
Um, the ability to record classes for later viewing. I personally really love this. I've had so many times where I've taught like my posement class and people come up to me afterwards and say, oh, I wasn't able to take your class. I've, I, you know, I've, I really wanted to take it. Well, this is a really nice opportunity for them to be able to go and look at it whenever they want to and see, you know, and see, you know, if it's the middle of the night, they can go and, and watch it. And that's a really, you know, that's a really cool thing. Um, this is a, a great medium that's been underutilized until now, right? I mean, this has been around. Zoom has been around forever. Skype has been around forever. Um, you know, we've, we've had Facebook for a very long time and um, we've used it, but I think that now that we have to use it, we're really seeing how, you know, how much we can, you know, how much we can do um, as a group, you know, as a you know world really um online um the other really nice one is classes you can't teach at events due to equipment or other issues they're now accessible and that's a really nice thing you know my partner does woodworking and you know if we're doing an uh an like in, in a hotel classes or you know or even outside uh at an event it's not always easy to bring a bunch of tools with um, to to a to a class and it's messy right <laughs> so you know this gives the opportunity to be able to teach that kind of thing that you can't teach otherwise so what can you teach online I found that lecture style classes are the easiest um, so uh, let's see some examples of that are um, uh, Mr. Giada taught a class on Italian apothecary uh, last last week or this week this week on Wednesday um, we've had um, we've had all sorts of lecture style classes um, and so those are really nice because you can just have kind of a PowerPoint and you can talk you can just talk to your you know to your participants and and so that makes it a really kind of smooth and uh, and an easy way to teach um, how to style classes are are possible to teach online. They are tricky. Um, you know, if you want to teach something where everybody's doing it right then, there's a lot of pausing, right? There's a lot of waiting. And in an in-person class, that's okay. You know, people can chat with each other, people can, you know, do things, but it's a little bit harder online. Um, so if you're gonna do a, like a large project, I wouldn't recommend doing a class that's longer than a couple of hours, um, you know, and maybe do it in a you know in a few in a few classes um, or the other way you can do that is do kind of a lecture style class and then you know but give the steps right and show people the steps without expecting them to do it at the same time so that way they can go through and they can watch the watch the class kind of pause it where they need to pause it go back if they need to and follow you uh, follow along with you on a recorded class instead um, and then just watch the class live and ask any questions that they have, um, you know, uh, during that. So anything can really, though, be taught if you're really determined to teach it, right? If you have, uh, you know, if you have something that you really want to teach, give it a try. You know, if you have an idea, give it a try. We did, uh, we did a cooking class with Master Eduardo, uh, which was awesome. I mean, we had... Uh, he was, you know, cooking eggs on a spit, and it was amazing, and eggs exploded, and it was, it was so much fun. Um, it was tricky, you know, it was tricky to get the right angles and things, you know, like the, you know, the camera got hot at one point, but, but it was still a fun class, and it was a really great experience. Um, if you're not sure, uh, ask around and see if there's interest in what you want to teach. Yeah, you might be surprised at the reaction. I um, I would just put up a post when I started doing this and asked people uh, what I asked them what days of the week would work for them, and I asked them if they were you know if they were interested, and if they were interested, what classes they would be you know they'd like to learn. And so a lot of these classes have been based on on the responses I got to that, including this class, right? <laughs> so. All right, so how to plan for your class. Be sure to have all your materials that you need beforehand, especially right now, um, you know, with our, the social distancing and, and everything going on. Um, make sure that you have the, you know, 
if you need special paper or special tape, if you need tools, wire, you know, um, things that you need, make sure that you have those on hand and just double check it before, you know, not like the day of the class, <laughs> double check it to make sure that you actually have those in hand because, you know, there have been times where I think I have something and I don't actually have it. Um, have an outline or notes. Have some sort of plan of what you're going to do, right? Um, it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be scripted, um, but just have a, a, an idea of what you want to do. Um, what I do is is actually the next bullet, a PowerPoint. Um, it's a fantastic guide for you and for your students. So your students can follow along. Um, you know, we're all at home, right? There's tends to be chaos at home. Um, <laughs> other things happen, you know, other than just sitting in a classroom. So having those bullet points help them kind of follow along if, if something else comes up, if they need to leave the, you know, they need to leave the computer or whatever, um, that gives them the opportunity. For me, a PowerPoint's really nice because it gives me a guide. It gives me, you know, kind of where I want to go. I don't, I don't write an outline. I don't script this. It's not, you know, like I don't over plan. Um, but I do, you know, but I do need to be kept on track. <laughs> because I tend to ramble. And so, uh, so a PowerPoint is a really nice way to remind myself of what I'm supposed to be talking about. Um, have handouts ready ahead of time and post them on either your Facebook event page, your blog, kind of wherever you're, you know, wherever you're uh, sharing these classes, at least a day beforehand. Um, and as far as, you know, if it's not handouts, if it's material, if you're wanting people to follow along with you, um, say I have my wire weaving class that I'm teaching uh, June 14th. And um, that class, uh, you know, you need a lot of materials to learn that, right? You need wire and, and cones and you need specific things. And I put out a couple of weeks ago, actually, I put out a list for people of, of uh, resources for them to pick up materials so that they had time to, you know, order them from Shipwreck Beads or Amazon or wherever they're going to order them from um, so that they can have them in hand if they want to try and follow along. Uh, if, you're, if you're uncomfortable, if you don't know, you know, if you don't know what this is going to look like or, you know, if, you're, if, if things are going to work right, do a trial run with a friend or at least, you know, pop on to the class, you know, half an hour beforehand and, and have somebody else there and so that they can see what other people are going to see. So that way you, um, so that way you can, you can get a little more comfortable. It also helps you get a good idea of kind of a class length, although your participants, you know, definitely alter that, right? Like, so if, if they have a lot of questions, that's going to that's going to tend to alter your class length, right? Personally, you know, it's it's always funny. I'm always like, oh, geez, my class is so short, but but really, I mean, I always feel like the real meat of the class, the real important part, is the question and answer portion, right? So that you can kind of bounce things back and forth to each other. Um, doing a trial run will also show you any possible hiccups. If you're doing like two cameras, if you're doing, uh, if your lighting is weird, it's going to show that to you, right? You're going to be able to see what's behind you, right? So you can get an idea of uh, if you, you know, if you're okay with what you see behind you, right? That kind of thing. If you're really, you know, yeah, I mean, those are, those are really the big things in doing a trial run with a friend. I was about to go into something else that I talk about later, actually. Um, all right, so advertising of classes. Try to have a central location. If you're going to do more than one class, try to have a central location for your list of classes. I have my list of classes. Um, um, I have an artist page, um, Early Sweden, on Facebook, and that is where I keep all of my, uh, that's where I keep all of my um, class links you know, all the event page links, all of the, um, all the YouTube links, everything is there. So that way uh, I can say, if you want more information and more classes, um, you know, look at the pinned post on my artist page. Um, you can do that on a blog. You can have a specific Facebook group just for your classes. Um, 
don't be afraid to post your upcoming classes in groups you think might be interested. When I started doing this, I felt really self-conscious about posting. Um, I, I'd be like, oh, maybe I should only post in one or two places. But people miss it. And then people are bummed that they didn't get to do it. And, you know, and the feedback that I've gotten is post it, you know, let us see it, remind us so we don't forget. So um, I try and post it when I create the uh, Facebook event. Um, I post it again. Uh, I do a reminder. Generally, I do a reminder a day or two beforehand um, just to say, hey, guys, this is going on. Just a reminder, this is happening. Um, and I tend to post those all in the same places. Uh, and, um, you know, and then I, I, I try and keep just kind of in communication with people and, um, yeah, and, and, you know, if people are interested in the class, I try and direct them back to the, um, back to the early Sweden page. Um, there are a lot of Facebook groups advertising upcoming classes. Um, look at your local groups, your local kingdom or barony or, you know, whatever groups um, and see if there are any in your area. Um, our kingdom on tier created almost right away a uh, virtual on tier. So I, I always post there. But I also post in our local baronies. I post in the, I generally post in the barony that, or at least the kingdom that, that, um, that my instructors are in. So that way people that, you know, that know them can see that they're teaching a class. Um, larger groups you might also be interested in. So there's a really great resource, the SCA Virtual Classroom and Artisan Display on Facebook. Um, that if you type that into Facebook, you will find it. <laughs> there are so many classes going on. It's incredible. And, and so many of them are there. Um, yeah, uh, somebody said there are so many classes. It's, it's massive. It's, it's constant. Um, the amount of classes that are getting posted. It's so cool. I, I really love that. Um, something that was recently created is the Gnome World Entertainment Guide, which is really, really cool. Um, and uh, you basically, you have to, if, you, if you're doing classes or if you're doing a class, you have to put in, um, you have to do like a Google form, you have to fill out a Google form um, and give them the information. That information goes into a spreadsheet. And um, the No World Entertainment Guide, it actually comes out, I believe it comes out once a week. And it, um, you know, and they have cute little graphics showing, okay, these are the ongoing you know, things. So, and the really cool thing about that is it's not just classes, it's classes. It's, they have a whole fighters one for different, you know, fighter activities that are happening, you know, uh, training videos, all sorts of different stuff. Um, and then they also have the entertainment one, which is, um, which is classes and, uh, and shows and like interview, you know, like ongoing interview stuff, um, that kind of thing. So that's a really cool one to check out too. Um, you know, and don't forget to also share it on your personal page, right? Um, <laughs> don't forget to share it there too, because, and, and tell people, feel free to share this. You know, if you think that somebody's interested, uh, somebody posted today, just as this was about to start, that they, you know, that they shared this to, um, you know, another group that they're a part of. Awesome. You know, if, if you want to, you know, anybody who wants to learn, I am more than happy to teach, right? So it's a really cool, uh, you know, it, it, that's really a cool thing to do. Um, communicating with students. So this is something that I've, I'm trying to listen to myself in and to learn. And this is a really important one, especially if you're doing like an ongoing thing. Um, be clear about the requirements for your class, um, the platform being used, description of the class, materials needed. Um, uh, that's a that's an important one to do you know remember that there's always going to be some confusion you know even if you think you're being clear um you know the first six weeks i posted the same thing in every event and you know and and now i'm getting questions that i didn't get that first six weeks so sometimes you kind of have to alter what you're doing um don't beat yourself up about it but but try and, you know, try and be pretty clear with people. Um, and if people say, hey, I was confused on this, listen to that and, and see if you need to alter something. Don't forget to mention the time zone. Um, you know, I, I, where I'm in Pacific time. So, you know, this class started at 2 o'clock 
you know, Pacific time. And, um, you know, and so initially in my classes, I didn't put that. I didn't put the times on. I didn't even think about the fact that people from outside the kingdom would be interested in these classes. So, um, but, you know, that was a question I was getting pretty quickly was what time zone is this in? So that's an important thing to put. Um, yeah, somebody said a couple sentences clearly descri describing what the class is about is really helpful. Titles alone aren't sufficient. Um, that's really true. Uh, I try and put a description. I don't, I don't, I don't tend to post the Facebook event until I have a description. Um, on my so I know like on my artist page where I have just the early Sweden um, you know on the early Sweden page uh, when I just have the post I don't put a description because it would lengthen the the uh, post so much and it, I it would it would make it I, I think hard visually but every event page but that's kind of what I use the event page for right is to give more information and I try to have a picture on the you know for the Facebook pages I'm sharing um, and I try and have a description where I share right so like when I'm sharing it with different groups um, the description is usually in there um, be sure not to overwhelm yourself so you know what I was saying before don't beat yourself up right we're all dealing with a kind of high stress situation right now and um, you know and and people can be emotional and people can be sensitive and that includes yourself and um so just remember that um don't don't overwhelm yourself don't beat yourself up remember that you know you're you're doing a thing because you're excited about a thing and and you want to share that and that's awesome and you're not perfect and you know um before i you know i actually had to reschedule this class and the reason i had to reschedule it was because um you know when I scheduled it initially, we didn't have uh, school happening yet um, for my daughter. Um, you know, she was just home. And, and then when the, classes, when the classes I was teaching on Wednesdays started coming up, um, my daughter was using my computer for school. And so I didn't have the time to properly prepare um, for the classes during the week. And so any classes that I had scheduled, I finally, I looked at it and I said, I, I can't do this. I, I can't, I can't teach on Wednesdays. I, I can, I'll keep those open so that if other people want to teach it, I can absolutely host on Wednesdays, but I can't teach on Wednesdays anymore. You know, so listen to yourself and make sure that you're taking care of yourself above everything else. Set boundaries. Holidays, certain hours of the day, you know, family time. That's a really hard one for me, <laughs> but, um, you know, and especially because a lot of the classes are, you know, being seen by people all over, right? And so people are, different people are in different time zones. And so, you know, I, I have had uh, sometimes where people will ask the same question in several different places and people start getting kind of worked up about it or they'll send me a private message and they'll get kind of upset that I didn't respond right away. You know, um, that's something that is not on you. Remember, you just try and remember that right and try and set those boundaries so that you're not um so you're not uh you know you can forgive yourself right <laughs> don't uh don't um don't feel like you have to respond right away that's kind of that's kind of the big thing make sure that you know um i was in the middle of mother's day you know breakfast that had been made for me and um i had a class coming up and you know people were posting all this stuff and i was like okay i i I finally had to put the phone down because I realized I was in the middle of Mother's Day breakfast and I finally had to put the phone down and say, okay, I have to, I have to let this go and I will deal with this when I'm done. So that's a really important thing to remember, especially if you're doing kind of an online series kind of thing. Okay, why Zoom? So um, I personally really like Zoom. Uh, different people have different opinions, but you know, but, but because that's what my experience is, that's what I'm here to share with you. So uh, it allows you to record your class, which is so, so nice. Um, it can be recorded either to your computer, which I have a terrible computer, so I, record, I have it recorded to the Zoom site for, uh, for later download. Um, they have a, up to a, with the plan that I have, I have a, a, a gig of space on their, you know, on their server for my classes. So 
I just make sure to empty it out as I go and, uh, and I'm good. Um, so the next thing, sorry, I just had a thought. The next thing that um, is that uh, it gives you a lot of versatility, right? So um, you've got the ability to screen share, right? And you can screen share anything. Um, you've got, uh, you can actually do breakout rooms so you can break people up into different, into different things, um, which is awesome. You, uh, you can, sorry, you can, um, uh, you can, uh, so the class link that I have is I can do an up to 24 hour class, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> you can do, Oh, so breakout room. So basically, I could take anybody, uh, you know, I could take everybody in this and I can actually assign them um, into separate groups. So, so basically the groups, uh, the groups, you can, um, you're, you're basically, I could break you up into groups of four. And then those four people can interact together in a room, you know, with their video and, and, and microphone on and stuff and you guys can work on a project basically or you guys can talk about something so that's a really cool thing that you can actually do and you can do it random or you can actually set it up so that you can assign breakout rooms you know people to different breakout rooms so you know that's a really awesome thing that you can do in zoom that i, I think is really cool um i haven't needed it for my classes but we've talked about doing you know possibly Bardic competitions or arts and science competitions on here. And, and that would be a really cool way to do that. Um, and somebody said, yeah, breakout rooms are also really great for running multiple classes with different instructors simultaneously. Um, number of participants. So I can have up to 100 participants in my 24 hour class. So, so you know, that's, that's, that's not bad. Um, I've had, I've gotten nervous a couple of times. My classes haven't gone over about 40, um, but you know, with the number of people interested, it sometimes makes me nervous, but, uh, but you can actually up it too. You can bump it up to, I think it's 300 participants for $20 a month or, you know, um, there are different options. Um, so there are two different options, uh, that I'll talk about. They're the two kind of basic options for Zoom. So basic is free. It allows up to 100 participants for 40 minutes per class. And it allows you to record your class to your device. So that's the free, the free program. Um, I have the Pro, um, and the Pro is $14.99 a month. It allows up to 100 participants for up to 24 hours, and it allows you to record to the Zoom site. So for me, the, you know, because I'm doing so many classes a month, it made sense for me to have the, you know, the, the pro plan. If you think you're going to have a short class, you know, and you can have unlimited one-on-one -on -one meetings with, uh, with people on the, on the basic plan um, as well. So if you're more, you know, if you're more interested in just using it more like Skype, then it's free. Um, so that's a, that's kind of a, the, the, those are the two options that I, I tend to talk about. You, but like I said, you can bump up like, it's like I think $20 a month to have 300 people, you know, 300 participants, that kind of thing. So if you're doing a single class, see if a friend has a pro account. Um, you know, I mean, so many people have Zoom accounts right now. Odds are you know somebody that has a pro account. So if you're planning on just doing one class, see if somebody else can host it. I mean, it, it doesn't, it doesn't affect anything really for you to, you know, for them to say, make you a co-host or make you the host once you, you know, once you start the class, because you'll still have that up to 24 hours and hundred participants. All right. So this is the less exciting part. So setting up your Zoom meetings. Um, we're going to go through, and I'm just kind of, I, I took a bunch of screenshots so that I can kind of show you uh, the basics on how to, how to break this stuff down. Um, okay, so this, uh, this first picture, I'm just going to confirm, you guys can see my mouse, right? Okay, excellent. Um, so this first picture here is the um, is the Zoom application that you get on your uh, computer. 
that will install on your computer. So this is what you'll see just on your home page. Okay. You can see, and this is kind of calling me out here as far as being prepared. I, yes, put together this PowerPoint presentation last night. Um, that's why the screenshot has that date. So this is the home page. In order to just create a meeting immediately, you can just click on new meeting and that will just put you into, into a meeting right then. And you can hit invite and you know send that invite to people and then you just bam, you have a meeting. What I tend to do is, is the schedule button right here. When you hit the schedule button, the schedule meeting window pops up. Okay. So I've, uh, I've hidden a couple of things just, you know, I've hidden like my personal meeting ID um, uh, because that's something that's kind of stays consistent. And so, you know, I don't want necessarily people to have access to my personal meeting ID. Um, but um, so this is, this is what that window will look like. So you need to just type in the title of what you want your class or, or you know, what you, whatever you want to call your meeting. Put your date, your start date, um, how long you guess the class is going to be. I tend to just put it at one to two hours, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't stop you at that point. It's like, you know, the start time also doesn't affect anything. So you can start that class a day ahead of time. You don't actually have to start it at that time, right? Does Zoom default to your computer uh, device's time zone? Yes, yes, but if you can see, there is a drop down, so you can change that time zone. Um, right here, there's the, the time zone, and that is a drop down, so you can change that. So um, you can make something a recurring meeting. So I have a couple of those that are recurring meetings that I just share that out. Okay, this is the thing we're doing right now, you know. Um, so you have two options as far as your meeting ID. So you can generate uh, automatically a meeting ID or you can use your personal meeting ID. So personal meeting ID is kind of like your, it's, it's your meeting room, right? It's like your private meeting room. So I, I wouldn't recommend using your personal meeting ID for your classes because that's gonna stay consistent. So if you use that for, for classes, then, you know, if somebody, if you're doing something, you know, if you're teaching another class, if you're in a meeting, if you're doing whatever, um, you know, in that personal meeting space, uh, and somebody sees an old link and is like, hey, I want to take that class and clicks on it, then, um, you know, they're going to end up in that meeting. So that's, that's just kind of my thoughts on that. Um, password, requiring a meeting password. That's up to you. I personally prefer not using a meeting password. Um, you know, I, I understand how Zoom works, but it's, it's not, you know, it's not perfect, you know, and everybody has different levels of tech, you know, technological savvy, right? So technological knowledge. So it might be harder for somebody to get into the class if I required a password, which is why I don't. Um, but if you're more comfortable that way, you are more than welcome to use a password. Um, you can give the option right here of, you know, when you join, you know, do you want your video on or off? And then there's the other option of when your per participants join, do you want their video on or off? So I always set mine as on and I always set my participants as off. Once again, that's up to you. If you want you know, if you want to be able to see all of your students, you can absolutely see all your students. Um, I do it the way that I do because I'm recording and because, um, you know, I don't want it to be tricky as far as having, you know, permission of everybody to record them or permission of everybody to post, you know, to post the class. So that's, uh, that's why I do it that way. It also just kind of makes it easier if somebody ends up in the class that's there to cause mischief instead of taking the class. Um, it it helps kind of curtail that a little bit. I like to give all the options that I can as far as accessibility. So, you know, you can make it so that only audio is available through telephone or through computer. I give both options. Um, the calendar thing, I, you can have it automatically add to your Outlook or to your Google Calendar or whatever. Um, those are the other options there. 
there's a couple more here. Let's, I'll, I'll go back down to this to talk about this. So this is the advanced options. This is a drop down at the bottom of that same window. Um, so these options are the ones that I always double check. So I always make sure that the waiting room is enabled. Um, if the waiting room isn't enabled, then either people are kind of sitting there unable to get it at all until you until you're in um, or you know or they're automatically in the meeting before you get there um, and you don't have time to kind of get things prepared and and, and stuff so that's that's uh, something to look at um, I always make sure to have my waiting room going um, I never enable join before host for a class um, because then you've got everybody in there um, before you're in there, you're not ready, you know. Um, muting participants upon entry, um, not everybody, you know, immediately has their bearings, right? And so not everybody immediately is muted or has their video off. So, um, you know, so if they come in after the class has started and their video is going or their, you know, or well, or their, their microphone is on, um, then it disrupts the class. So I, I have a mute participants upon entry. Um, I don't select only authenticated users can join um, because I want this as accessible as I can have it for people. Um, I don't want just Zoom users to be able to use it. I do automatically have it record the meeting so that I don't forget to record the meeting. So once you hit schedule, you know, then, then that's on here and it'll show up in the meetings window. Okay, so here's the next couple of classes that we're actually doing. Um, and so, you know, so it'll show up here, your your most, you know, your, your, your next meeting is gonna show up in the big window here or whichever one you select. So when you wanna start your meeting, you can just hit start and it'll pop up. If you wanna edit, you know, if you wanna edit in this uh, window, it will, you know, you just hit edit and you can change stuff in the meeting. Um, in order to invite people, if you click copy invitation, you'll automatically have that copied and you can paste that into Facebook. And that's what I, you know, that's the, the little blurb that I posted to have the link. That's where I get that. Or you can delete your class if you want to. All right. So if you aren't using the application to set up your meetings, you can set it up in the browser. Um, this is what that would look like. So there are just a couple of, of tabs here on the side um, and under meeting, all you need to do is schedule a new meeting and you're gonna see very similar options in that window to the ones that we just went over. And just as a note, this it just means these little exclamation points just mean I don't have a password on the class. So to ex access your recordings. So, you know, in uh, you can't really access them on the application. So you, you want to go to the website. Um, on, uh, you know, on your personal tab, there'll be the recordings tab. And they'll all be right here. Okay. So you'll be able to see, okay, well, here's my classes. And then if you click the more button, you can, the, the download option is there and you can download them to your computer. Generally what I do is I download it to my computer and then I upload it to YouTube and that's where I actually um, edit it. Does anybody have any cl class uh, questions so far? Just, just to check. Okay. All right, so Zoom settings. Oh, I've never tried to upload anything to YouTube. Um, so that's actually pretty easy. If you have a YouTube um, account, I mean, you can set up a YouTube account pretty easily, but if you have a YouTube account, um, there's just a little button in the corner. Um, it's got a little picture of like a, a, a video camera and, it, and it's got a little plus on it, I think. And then you just have the option to upload. So you can just upload there. And then there's a little um, editing studio option. And, um, and it gives you all of kind of the options on how to upload, uh, upload things. So, okay, so this is in the settings section um, of the Zoom website. Uh, you can kind of personalize things a little bit more. 
Okay, so the personalization there is, um, I, I want to go through that a little bit because there's a lot of options. I'm not going to go over every single one of these options because there are four uh, slides of this. <laughs> so I don't want to go over every single one. Um, if I don't go over one of them and you have a question about it, ask and I will, um, I will talk to you about it. So, um, so, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm just kind of going to go over this like this. Um, under the scheduled meeting section, host video. I have it set up so that in all my meetings, you know, when I hit schedule a meeting, it automatically says that the host video is going to be on and the participant, participant video is going to be off. But that can be switched in, you know, it, while you're setting up a meeting, right? You can flip the little tab to say, no, I do want my participant video on if you want. Oops, audio type. Once again, as I said before, I, I do the telephone and computer audio option just to give as many people the option as I can. I always keep join before host off. Um, enable personal meeting ID. So if you want a personal meeting ID, you can have one. If you don't want a personal meeting ID, you don't have to have one. That just means that I have a personal meeting ID. Um, use personal meeting ID when scheduling a meeting. We, I kind of talked about that before. This would make it so it automatically says, yes, I want to use that. Uh, use a personal ID uh, when starting an instant meeting. So basically when you click just the, um, you know, just that first button, the join button um, or new meeting button um, that I showed you in that first window, the orange button, um, that would use your personal ID instead of using a, a random one, that's really up to you. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of the time, if you're doing just a really quick meeting kind of thing, and you're not, you're setting, you're not setting it up. That means it's usually people, you know, so. Um, and again, I keep that require a password for personal ID meetings, especially off. Okay. Um, once again, the only authenticated users can join. We went over these. Um, Requiring a password when scheduling new meetings. Um, a password will be generated when scheduling a meeting. So if I want a password, this will automatically do that. Um, requiring a password for instant meetings, I'm not going to have that on either because once again, instant meetings are generally with people you know. Um, I do put this in just in case I accidentally create. Uh, yeah, it will be on YouTube later. Um, the uh, the password being embedded in the invite link um, for the one click join. So basically, if you uh, you know when you do the invitation, when you copy that invitation to send to people, um, that password, if you do require a password, um, will be in that invitation. So you don't like accidentally forget to give people the password in order to join the the meeting, the class. Um, require password for participants joining by phone. Um, that's on, but if I don't have a password, it's not gonna be functional. Mute participants upon entry, that just means that that's gonna be there every time I do a meeting. Um, let's see. Chat, so allow participants, meeting participants to send a message visible to all participants. I like to keep that on because people can have little bits of conversation. If somebody has a question, sometimes one of the participants will answer it and that's kind of a cool back and forth. So I like to have that um, visible. Private chat, so I do allow meeting participants to send private one-on-one -on -one messages to each other, but just a little not piece of knowledge, if you send private messages back and forth to each other, you'll actually, that private chat will actually show up in the saved chat log for the host. So the host will still see your conversation, just, just, to, just to let you know. Um, and it automatically saves chats. I like to save the chats because that way, if, I, if I'm going through um, and I, I'm trying to remember, you know, um, a resource that somebody mentioned during the class or um, or some sort of, uh, you know, or, or an important question that I that I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put that on the blog post later. Um, I have that to go back and reference to. Uh, sound notification when someone joins or leaves, that's that kind of ding dong that you hear sometimes. 
Um, I keep that off because I don't want it to affect the uh, recording. Um, so file transfer, hosts and participants can send files through the in-meeting chat. I have it set up um, this way so that hosts can, but I actually, um, there's another spot where I actually keep participants from sending files because once again, that's another way that people can kind of cause mischief in the class, right? So let's see. Co-hosts, allow the host to add co-hosts. So yeah, co-hosts have the same control as the host, which is really nice. So that's how I, I have other people teach classes is, you know, I, I make them a co-host and then they can share their screen. They can, you know, they can, uh, they can answer questions or, or do things if they want to also in the class. Um, I find co-hosts to be really, really handy. Um, and it's, it's very simple to do. Um, it's it's in kind of the it's in the options as far as managing participants. I'll show you that window a little bit later. Polling, add polls to meeting controls. Um, this allows the host to survey the attendees. I've never used it, but it's a nice option to have. Um, oh, let's see. Screen sharing, allow the host and participants to share their screen. So I once again I set that up for host only because you don't want, you know, if you don't want uh, your if you don't want your participants video up right you also don't want them to be able to share their screen because that's part of the issues that there were um initially when people started using zoom a lot was that um people were letting people just automatically join into the classes and so people would find a link and and then a whole bunch of people would join and they would post really inappropriate stuff so um yeah so it's best to not let your participants share their screen uh, let's see. There's actually a whiteboard that you can use during meetings. I haven't really used it. Um, I, I tend to use PowerPoints. So uh, let's see. Remote control during the screen sharing. The person who is sharing can allow others to control their shared con the shared content. I mean, if they if they want to set that up, they can. Um, Nonverbal feedback. That's the little like um, yes, no, go slower, go faster buttons. see. Allow removed participants to rejoin. So if I remove a participant, the way this is set up right now, if I remove a participant, I'm not going to remove a participant from a class unless there's some sort of issue. You know, if they keep unmuting or if they keep turning on their video or if they're doing something not appropriate. So I um, basically, if I remove a participant from the, um, from a meeting, that means that they can't come back in, that they, they can't come back in. So that is, is a really helpful thing as far as, you know, if there are any issues, it just means that you don't have to deal with that person even in the waiting room, they're just gone. Um, allow participants to rename themselves. I do like to do that. So you have the option of, um, of actually changing your name. So uh, if you, if you're looking on your video, if you're not on your phone, um, there's like a little box that has three buttons and the options there, in, within the options, there are rename. And I'm actually gonna do that right now. Now I'm Mr. Stacey Abrego Lindy. Um, I had done it before, but then my computer died. So, <laughs> so it wasn't there anymore. And I just realized that. So you guys can actually all change your names as well um, within, the, within the thing, which is kind of cool. Then you can, you can have your modern name or you can have your SCA name, which is kind of a nice thing. Um, let's see, waiting room. Once again, we kind of talked about the waiting room. I think it's a really important thing to use. Um, you can also see if, if there's somebody that you know you, you know, are, are concerned about in your class, you can kind of hang, let them hang out in the waiting room. Um, if, if there's, if there's a, a name that looks kind of maybe weird, you can leave it in the waiting room if you feel like it might actually be kind of a mischief maker, right? So show a join from your browser link. So this, it says here, so it allows participants to bypass the Zoom application download process and join a meeting directly from their browser. This is a workaround for participants who are unable to download, install, or run applications. So um, several of you said today that you had to download the application. In theory, you should not have to. There should be, um, when you click on the link, 
that pops up below at the bottom of the screen or at the bottom of my my share on Facebook you should be able to join from the browser um, I've tried it and it works so I'm not really sure why there was that issue today but that's one of the reasons that I like to use zoom is that because you don't necessarily have to people don't necessarily have to download something to their computer um, so I'll look into that a little bit further Oh, and and so somebody does say that they're you know they're doing it from their browser. So it is it is something that's a possibility. I'm not really sure um, what the issue was today with for a few people, but but it is but it is something again that is important to me is that if people aren't comfortable using the Zoom application, downloading something to their computer, you know that that's an option for them. Um, you can also live stream meetings to Facebook to YouTube um, through Zoom. And, and I see that some some of the things that people do, they actually do do that. And that's that's a really cool thing. Um, so that is an option that you can leave available. I leave it available. I haven't used it yet, but I do leave it available. Okay, so running your class. Once you hit that start button, this is what's gonna pop up for you. Okay, well, not obviously not this picture, right? This is me, but, <laughs> but this is my, um, this is just, I, I didn't have my video up, um, I have my, if you can see, I did. I had the start video off at the time um, that I did this. So this is just my profile picture on Zoom. Um, so this is what you're going to see as far as your browser goes. So I had the recording paused right here. Um, if you have it to automatically record and you wanna wait to have it start recording, you can just pause it right there and then you just press play again to get it to go again. Um, you're gonna see down here, uh, there's the, the uh, microphone um, stuff so if you hit this little button that's gonna pop up it's gonna give you the different options of microphones that you have available so right now I actually have three options available I have my uh, microphone for my webcam on my computer on my laptop um, but my laptop my uh, video camera is really bad so I actually just recently bought myself a new webcam and that also has a microphone and then I have a microphone in my headset um, I prefer to use the headset because it directs the sound a little bit more and you know we have people in the house and dogs and stuff and so I, I like to be able to keep it a little more um, controlled so you're gonna have the same similar options under start video um, in this button you're gonna be able to choose if you have multiple webcams so you can pick which webcam you're using Right, and you can actually, so the webcam that I have is actually an HD one, so I can, if I want to record in HD, I can change the, the screen ratio. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of different options there. Um, so uh, I'll go over participants in a minute. That's actually another slide, and so is chat. So there's another way here to resume and stop recording. This would be when we were talking about breakout rooms earlier. Um, that's the breakout rooms button. So if you click on that, you'll be able to assign people breakout rooms. Um, there's my reactions button. So, you know, so I can, I can do a thumbs up. I can do all that different stuff that people can do. Um, and then when you're done with your class, you can hit end <laughs> and then just hit end meeting for all and your class is done. Um, you can do end meeting for yourself or end meeting for all. I recommend doing end meeting for all because if you, just do it for yourself, then all of your participants are just kind of left in the class. Okay, so this is um, participants. Okay, so in participants, um, this, that's that button here. If you click on participants, this will pop up. And this can be set up as either a pop out or it can be set up to be connected to your screen. I have it currently as a pop out on my screen because I have, I'm sharing a screen and so it's easier to see. So, um, so there are a couple of things here. This is where you're gonna see all your participants is down here. There's gonna be, um, when you highlight it, you're gonna have an option to mute or unmute. There's gonna be a big blue button that says mute or unmute and then there's gonna be a more button okay and in that you can make somebody a co-host you can let that person record you can put somebody in a waiting room um, that's how you kind of uh, control the situation in your in your class with your participants in this window also if somebody uh, you know if somebody has a question you, they can put up a little raised hand if somebody um, you know 
wants to just answer you know a yes or no question they can use the little yes or no thing and then a little green check mark or a little red x will show up here um, this is the more button so this is something that was important for me to discover um, this is an, a couple other options here so you can mute participants upon entry okay so that's something that you can do other places but you can also make sure that it's open here so you can allow your participants to unmute themselves or you can not allow your participants to unmute themselves so i have it set up this doesn't show that but for my class right now i have it set up so that um, participants can't unmute themselves i can still unmute you so if, if you know if i want you to be able to say something i can unmute you but that way participants don't accidentally unmute themselves they don't you know um it, it just helps kind of keep keep everything kind of under control, um, especially in larger classes. Um, you can also choose to play the enter or exit, enable the waiting room, and you can lock your meeting. So if you don't want anybody else to join your meeting, then you can lock it right here. There's no more, you know, there's no more option. Nobody else can come in. Chat window. So if you can see here, once you click on this button, the chat button, then the chat window will pop up below your participants window on that same kind of side, or it can, you can have it as a pop up, pop out. Um, so uh, there's not a lot to the chat. It's pretty basic. I think it looks pretty much the same for you guys. So there's this little option here where you can choose to send a message to everybody. You can choose to send a message to the people in the waiting room. And I try and do that. I try and let people know that they're not just kind of floating, that I'm gonna let people in in a few minutes. And I like to remind people to please keep their video and their, you know, and their microphones off. Um, this is where you can send a file. So if you want to send your handouts, that kind of thing, um, through this option to your participants, you can. I found that a little bit tricky. Um, not everybody, is able to see it, it doesn't always work. So that's why I like to do it beforehand. But if you really want to, you absolutely can do it that way too. Screen sharing. So once again, at that bottom toolbar, there's the green button and it says screen share or share screen. So when you click that button, this is the window that pops up. Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to show you on this. There are a few options here. So I've got you know, the browser that I had open at the time, it shows you every option for, you know, possibilities of things to share. So, um, you know, you could share the screen of your phone. You can, you know, I had a snipping tool open so I could screenshot things. Um, my PowerPoint slideshow and then the screen. So there is a possibility that the, the screen and the PowerPoint will look like the same thing. Make sure that you're clicking on the PowerPoint um, so that you're not just accidentally sharing your screen um, because then they'll, you know, then it won't just be the PowerPoint, right? It'll be everything moving around on the screen. Um, another thing is if you have video, if it's a video that you want to share, if you have video in your PowerPoint, make sure to click on share computer sound because if you share computer sound, then they'll be able to hear the, you know, the audio from, from your videos. After you select it, and if you want to share your computer sound, select that, then you just click on share. And then this is what it's going to look like. So your share screen is going to be, um, so basically you're going to see what everyone is seeing, okay? And then, and then you'll have a little uh, toolbar sitting up at the top and it floats, so it, it pops up and down. Um, so you'll see how many participants you have and you can still click on here to get the participants window to pop out. You can click, you know, to get, there's a chat one, the, the chat one right here under more that you can get your chat window to pop out. Um, this is where you can resume recording, stop recording. Um, all of your options are here. Um, they're just a little bit harder to access, <laughs> but they'll always be this little bit, this little green and red bit. Um, visible so that you'll be able to so you remember okay i'm sharing the screen and in order to stop sharing screen you would just push that red button and then you're no longer sharing so a quick note on powerpoint um 
uh, with uh, Mr. Giada's class, um, we were having a little bit of an issue. Um, we, we couldn't quite figure out how to get <laughs> how to get it to work right. I have two screens, so I'm able to um, so I'm able to have my presentation on one screen and then have you know everything else on the other screen. So my computer, when I hit you know play slideshow, automatically goes to one screen, right? So if you only have one screen, there is still a way to share your screen and not have the whole like all the PowerPoint tools showing. So if you go to the view section in PowerPoint, the view tab, there are several different presentation views, right? Um, the normal view is the one you generally use for editing, right? So if you click on reading view, you're going to end up with a window that is just your presentation. That's all it is. And it'll go through just like if it was sharing on one solid screen. So you can actually, you know, make that a little bit smaller and, 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 and make it work for you. And, and you're still going to be able to share your screen in a nice, clean way um, for your participants. All right, so we've pretty much gone over these, keeping your classroom secure. You know, use the rating room with all participants option um, because you can say, well, I want some people to be able to come in, but I prefer to use all participants and then I can just see who's there and I can you know, let just one person or two people in if those are the people that I need in at that time. Um, don't allow join before host, it just makes things complicated. Um, sh set screen sharing to host only, use a random meeting ID. Um, and I did talk about passwords already and, um, and muting kind of the reason for muting students um, and, uh, and the, you know, people's videos. So um, just a few other tips. So um, stick with a regular date and time. If you're planning to do a series, remember that consistency will give you better results. People are going to know that this is the time that you're going to be teaching. So or you know, or you're having whatever you're doing. So try and stick with a regular date and time if you're doing something on a regular basis. If you're just doing like a, a you know, a quick, a quick thing that you want to share, feel free to do that. that that's awesome. Um, but if you're, you know, but if you're, if you're doing like a, a series or that kind of thing, try and stick with kind of a regular date and time. We do Wednesdays at 6.30 and Sundays at 2. Um, and, you know, and that way, those are the slots that I have open. And, you know, and those are when people kind of know that these are happening. So this is a really important one. Teaching to yourself <laughs> or a camera will feel awkward in the beginning. Um, I promise it becomes more comfortable. Um, you get used to kind of talking to the camera or I tend to, I have my video really close to where the camera is. So I'm actually kind of talking to myself. Um, and then my, uh, my chat is over in this window over here, which is why I look over here sometimes just to make sure that if people are asking me questions, I see them, but you get used to it. You really do. I mean, Again, it's not the same as teaching in person, right? You're not going to see people's faces unless you want all the videos up. Um, but, but it does feel awkward. But it does, it does get better. I promise. Um, don't be afraid to check in with your class throughout your presentation. You know, make sure that what you think they're seeing is what they're seeing. Make sure that if they have questions, that you know that they're not kind of waiting to ask them. Um, yeah, see if anybody has any questions or comments, you know, if people have ideas um, about, uh, about other things that might be helpful. Sometimes it's really awesome to get. Um, keep an eye on your chat window. I'm, I can be really bad about that sometimes. I get really involved in teaching and I forget to look at my, um, you know, about uh, at my chat. Um, your class will let you know if there are any issues, if they can't hear you, if your video is breaking up, you know, if there's a fire behind you, they'll let you know. So, um, so keep an eye on the chat window. Um, even though you can't see your students, you'll still be able to interact with them. Um, as we learned today, your class will not be perfect, but you're doing better than you think. You really are. Um, people get concerned about pausing or saying, um, um, uh, pausing or saying, um, but, uh, but it's actually, it's okay. Like people don't expect you to be perfect. You are not a pro, right? This is not, you know, this is not a paid for class, right? So give yourself a little bit of uh, credit and, and forgive yourself a little bit. 
my computer died, you know, as we started this class, I had to start the class over and, you know, you just kind of have to roll with the punches and, 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 and just be honest with your students and let them know I'm not perfect too. And that's okay. Um, make sure to have some sort of beverage with you while you teach. I've got a lovely cup of tea here um, because you're talking for a long time and you're going to need it. Just make sure you have water, tea, something, um, something for your throat. Um, so if you're not comfortable with the technology, reach out to a friend who is or check with an ongoing class series like mine <laughs> to see if you can teach for them. Um, if you know if you don't if you don't want to deal with any of the extra stuff if you don't want to deal with zoom if you don't want to deal with any of that you probably have a friend who's more than willing to help you you know and and i you know i've i've done that for a lot of people and i i i love it i think it's great um and it's it's really great to kind of work as a team to do a class so talk to your friends or ask you know um Check with me if you want to do, if you are interested in doing a class, send me a message. You know, we can chat. So uh, does anybody else have any questions? Let's see. <laughs> While people are possibly typing, um, these are my two sources here. So this is my, um, my uh, blog. Uh, earlysweden.wordpress.com. So that's got all of my uh, my research and as well as links to all of the classes that have been taught. Um, Facebook.com backslash early Sweden is my artist page. So that's where all of the schedule, all the schedules are for all of the um, all the upcoming classes. And it also has all of the links to the YouTube um, recorded classes. So I have a question. Would, will you be sharing the PowerPoint? Yes. Um, oh, that is a, 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 note, a note too. If you're going to share your PowerPoint, um, try and uh, try and you, you should be able to pretty easily convert it to a PDF. Um, I would recommend that just so that way it, it's not uh, it doesn't you know it's not easy to alter it or you know um, if people don't you know if people want to use the PowerPoint that's awesome but you know but that way if they are looking at it and things move or you know it just makes it easier if it's a PDF also people also don't um, yeah uh, doing a PDF also yeah somebody says avoids sharing your personal information which is important you know as I went through the class I actually did have to blot out some stuff so I I hid the you know the upcoming, you know, the meeting, the the meeting uh, IDs for the upcoming classes, right? Um, and and my personal, my personal one as well. So that's a, a PDF is kind of a nice way to go if you're going to share that kind of thing. And yeah, and any notes are easier to share in PDF. Plus, more people have access to PDF than they have to the PowerPoint program. So you know, once again, it's about accessibility. Does anybody else have any questions? Give just one more minute. Because it takes a moment for people to type. <laughs> Okay, I think we're probably good. Um, thank you guys all for um, for joining me today for this class. Um, if you come up with any questions later or if you're watching the recording of this, please feel free to contact me. Um, you can contact me through my blog. You can contact me through my Facebook artist page. And I am more than happy to, to chat about this, to chat about pretty much anything. So um, thank you so much for joining me today um, and uh, have a wonderful day. <laughs>